Welcome to this jam-packed episode of Yarny Heart Fiber Art. My name is Jess, you can find me on Instagram at Yarny Heart, and this is the show where I talk about all the yarny things that I've been up to. I've got a lot to share with you this time around. I have five finished objects, three new things on my needles, and a huge bag of new yarn from the Bay Area Yarn Crawl, so if that sounds like your jam, sit back, knit along, or whatever it is that you're doing, and enjoy the show. Now, um, I have a lot to go through this episode, and I have all my show notes on my tablet, so if you see me looking down or looking away, I'm referring back to my notes because there's just no way that I can keep track of all this stuff in my head, so bear with me on that. Um, but uh, first off, if you're not subscribed and you like what I do here, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I'm really, really close to the uh, partner program milestone, and your support really mean a lot to me. So let's start off with my finished objects. So the first one, the first finished object that I have is the one that I'm wearing. This is my finished Minori Pullover by Ria Viv. Um, and I've, I've shared my progress on this a couple of times, but it's finally done. <laughs> um, it's really, really cute. And uh, yeah, so. I'm not going to get up. I've learned my lesson too many times that getting it close to the camera to show off the details doesn't ever work as well as I hope it does. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like sit here and I'll put in footage or pictures of me wearing it so that you can kind of see the, the full sweater and the details and everything. Um, but this is my Minori pullover. It's really pretty. I'm super happy with the way that it came out in the end. Um, and then, yeah, once again, this was knitted with Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock Worsted in the colorway Highland Fleece, which is just their undyed colorway. Um, so it's a very beautiful, like, neutral, natural, warm cream color. It's sheep colored, you know? Um, but yeah, I had a great experience working with this yarn. It's a really, really, um, soft yarn and a really nice one to work with. Okay, so I, I did you so I did purchase 11 balls of this yarn, um, just according to the estimated yardage for my size. Um, however, I only used nine and a half balls of it. I have two and a half balls left over, so <laughs> it's a little bit of like hindsight is 2020. I definitely have enough yarn left over that I could have knitted it a size or two up, which would have given it like a nice more oversized fit, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I didn't quite get that, but it's still, it still fits pretty nicely. Um, I did mention last episode that I had some gauge issues, which is still true. Like the gauge issues didn't go away <laughs> or anything. Um, however, as I've been wearing it, it has been slowly growing a little bit. Um, so like, I still don't have like quite as much positive ease as I would like. Like, I think I was supposed to have nine inches of positive ease and I didn't get that, but um, it's still comfortable to wear. Like it's certainly not too tight. Like it's not uncomfortable to wear. I don't have, I'm not having like negative ease here. So it's pretty comfortable still. Um, yeah, so a couple other things that I did. I pretty much knit it to pattern. Like I knit the body length to pattern. I did make the sleeves a little shorter, mostly because I was, I, I was done. <laughs> At that point, I didn't want to knit any more on the sleeves. And um, because I do have a lot of sweaters where the sleeves go like over my hands, um, I thought it would be nice to have a sweater where it's like an actual regular sleeve length. Um, and I do have short arms, so even though I shorten the sleeves, they're not really short on me, if that makes sense. Um, additionally, on the sleeves, you are supposed to do a decrease like 10 rows into the sleeve and I just omitted that. Um, I don't like my sleeves being too tight and already with the gauge issues it was feeling a little tight around the armholes and so I just I just want, went with a completely straight sleeve and I don't regret that at all. Um, I like the fit of it in the end. Um, another thing about this yarn <laughs> and maybe it's less the yarn and maybe it's more like my mistake um but it felted like i've worn this out maybe three times only um and it's already like pretty pretty felted under the arms and i don't know if there's a whole lot that i could have done or could do to prevent that or if it would happen again because you know the thing is like i wasn't expecting 
to be out as long as I was. I wore it like I wore it on a day of the Bay Area yarn crawl when it was cold. And then um, I wore it to church that same weekend. And I wasn't expecting to stay out very long. Like usually when I go to church, like I go and then I'll like stay and have lunch with people or like maybe like boba afterwards and then I'll go home. Um, but I have a friend who moved to a different state and she came back and like surprised everyone um, by coming back this weekend. And so I ended up staying out from like morning to night um, instead of just like going home like I usually would. And so, you know, I was like, um, it was, it got kind of warmer, it was a little rainy, so it was a little wet outside and humid, and like I was walking around and like sweating and you know, stuff like that. So it could just be that I asked too much of this sweater um, on like day two of wearing it. But I mean, either way, like that's kind of the thing with like um, sweater felting is like you don't notice it unless you're the one wearing it. Um, I don't think there's any way to undo it, unfortunately. So I think we're just gonna have to live with it. Um, oh, oh well. But if anyone else has knitted with uh, Blue Sky Fibers wool stock, um, please let me know if you've had similar problems with it felting kind of quickly or not. Because um, the thing is like, I love the yarn. It's really comfortable to wear and it's really fun to work with. And so, you know, whereas I would have been more inclined to return to this yarn to make garments and sweaters in the future because it's it's a pretty low price point relatively um and i liked working with it and a lot of people say that it's a workhorse yarn but if this is kind of like a common problem then i don't know if i would necessarily return to it again so if you've worked with it before let me know in the comments what you what you thought about the process or the finished garment afterwards i'd really love to hear your feedback on that um yeah, so this is my first finished object and then moving on to my second finished object this is one that has made like an appearance or two on the podcast but I'm pretty sure that everyone probably forgot about it um, I certainly forgot about it for a bit and it's been hibernating but after finishing this I just kind of I was like you know I don't feel like casting on something big like right away right now so let's just see what else I have that I could work on. And so I ended up finishing, finally, I ended up finishing my Goodfellow top, which has been, like I said, hibernating. <laughs> um, let me open my notes because I can never, I can never re remember the name of this designer. Um, okay. So this is the Goodfellow top by Faina Goberstein. And I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name, um, but this is from the summer 2017 issue of Interweave magazine, which I literally have a physical copy of. And no, I didn't. This is not an illegal copy because the cover is missing. I, I've just had it for so long and it's migrated to so many project bags that the front cover literally just fell off because I, I've knitted so many things from this magazine. Um, yeah, so this is from Interweave 2017, which is Shakespeare inspired. So, um, so this top is called the Goodfellow top. And so, yeah, I've been working on this one for a real long time. I think I casted it on last summer and I'm only just now finishing it, um, but it's really cute. So it's a nice um, cropped lace t-shirt kind of situation. Um, and it has lots of little so it has an all over lace motif as you can see and then it also has um it has separate sleeve bands that are knitted with lace and then sewn on and for the longest time it was literally just the sleeve bands that I had to do and I was like all I had left to do was the sleeve bands and then picking up and finishing on the collar um so I finally got around to doing that um and well I haven't really worn it yet I haven't taken pictures in it yet or anything because still kind of chilly outside which I'll get to later when I talk about my whips um so it's not really warm enough to wear it yet but I am looking forward to wearing it um in the spring just as kind of like a layering piece so that'll be exciting yeah so it's literally been so long since I casted this on that I can't 
even remember what size I cast it on. Like I can't remember if it was size four or five, but I, I can tell you that it was either size four or size five. I just don't remember which one. I also, for the life of me, do not remember how much yarn I used in total. Um, but I did use Kinks & Co. Um, pardon me, that was a big over. I did, so I did use Kinks & Co. Willet in the colorway Kestrel, which um, is a 100% cotton yarn. And I feel like that the yarn was probably the biggest factor in me letting this project sit for so long. I really didn't enjoy working with it. Like, um... 100% cotton like a lot of people say that it hurts to work with and like after picking this back up I was like oh yeah it really does kind of hurt to work with and um again with some of the other cotton projects that I will um introduce here and I'm just kind of like realizing what people are talking about when they say that um like it's just it's it is hard to work with because it doesn't have any stretch at all and so you feel like you're doing a lot more of like the tension work if that makes any sense but um yeah so that was a big factor in me letting this sit for so long also because the the yarn is very sheddy it's not really like sheddy in the sense that like an animal fiber would be sheddy but it's like it sticks to things like if I'm wearing like I remember if I was wearing like yoga pants or black sweatpants or anything they would just be covered in like green fuzz <laughs> when I was working on this I'm not really sure like what the deal is with that uh, and like why that happens um, I guess it's just like you know it's like not mercerized cotton and so it just kind of gets everywhere but it was very like fuzzy there is a lot of fuzz going on when I worked on this and it would like get all over my hands and get all over my pants and stuff like that and so I really didn't enjoy working with it um I additionally I for like the drape and the finished object I do kind of wish because I believe the original yarn is like a cotton merino situation um I do kind of wish that I had gone with like a cotton merino or some kind of like cotton blend instead of pure cotton. But regardless, it's done. Um, I really like the color. Like I remember when I picked out the yarn, I was really excited about the color. Um, and now that it's done and I don't have to work on it anymore, I'm once again excited about the color. So you know what? Let me go off camera and I'll just try this on real quick. Here we go. I was getting a little toasty. But yeah, I like it. It is pretty cropped, so I'm not sure, not sure yet how I would style this, but I think that'll be a bridge to cross when I get to it. <laughs> but it's cute. I'm trying real hard to like not <laughs> overheat because I have a lot, I have a lot more episode to film. <laughs> okay, so my next finished object um, are these little socks that I was working on last time. Um, just some basic, not really basic, they have a lace motif, but um, some little scrappy ankle socks. Um, and this is with uh, Gumi 50 by Bear Gear de France and uh, Barocco Ultra Wool. I found out finally what the yarn is that I was using. It's Barocco Ultra Wool um, fingering weight. That's what I was using for the toes and then for the little pico edge on the cuffs. I have been wearing these, so they're a little... <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're not grody. I've only been wearing them like around the house, okay? So like, um, but but they, they are a little bit stretched um, now because my feet have been cold. So I wanted I wanted to wear them now. But um, they did turn out okay in the end. Um, and like I had said, uh, oh, sorry. Let me mention the pattern. So the pattern was Mooshes by Suzanne Reese. And this is a free pattern. Um, but it does have some mistakes. It's not the best pattern out there, but it is free. Um, and you know, like for scrappy socks on a free pattern, that was just kind of like me getting back into my sock mojo. I'm happy with the way they turned out. Um, for some reason, somehow, like on one of these, the heel ended up taller than the other one. And I'm not sure how that happened. I do like the fit of the one with the taller heel better. The other one still fits, but I, I do like the fit of this second sock better. 
Um, I'm just not sure how it happened, but you know, it's it's in the past and I've got some cute little house socks. Um, I did also make a couple mistakes with the lace motif, um, but nothing that I cared enough about to like actually tink it back and fix. Um, since like I said, they're just kind of scrappy socks for me to wear around the house. So that's these. And I am super excited to get more socks casted on and finished in the near future. Okay, so this next one is one that has made a lot of appearances on the podcast in various stages of like non-progress. Um, but it's finally done. This is the Wind Rises Corset Top by Stitches and Burn. Um, it, you've probably heard me talk about this a few times now, but this is a gift for a friend that is like super belated. Now, um, I like lost yarn chicken, I had to order more yarn, and then I it was like cold and so I didn't want to crochet anymore. And honestly, the, the yarn does kind of hurt to work with a little bit. Um, I believe I said previously that I used this yarn for something else, but I was mistaken. I used the same brand, but a different yarn. The yarn that I had used previously for my dumpling bag was Circulo Charm. And this is Circulo Duna, which is a heavier yarn. And so, honestly, it did kind of suck to crochet with, but I think it, like, the thickness of the yarn and, like, the cotton content and, like, the structure that it has because it's such a thick cotton, I think it really made the finished piece super cute. Um, but it did kind of suck to work with. I won't lie. Um, it's really cute, guys. It's really cute. It's really giving, like, Cinderella. It's, like, it's, um... That's the back. I love the ruffle detail on the front because like it was when I finished it without the ruffle first it was already pretty cute and then I put the ruffle on I was like oh this is really 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 cute and then um it's kind of hard to see I don't think I did the best job of putting it on but um you can see there's a little heart charm right there it's kind of like it's got like pearls and it's like a little heart that's literally a nail charm from my nail charm collection. Um, but I thought it matched super cute. I don't usually do blue nails a whole lot. And so I was like, yeah, I'll put it on there as a little, like, little, little deco. So it's cute. Um, and as you can see, I still have lots of ends to weave in. Um, but I'm, I'm just proud of myself for finally <laughs> finishing it because it's been, a, it's been a process. Um, you saw when I held it up that I, that there's like a cream color and there's like that light blue. I ended up using only half a ball tube put up. It's kind of like, the put up is like around like a cardboard tube. So I really don't know what that's called. I'm just going to call it a skein because when in doubt it's a skein, right? Um, but I used about half a skein of that cream yarn for everything, like the front bodice and the ruffles and the everything and the lining. Um, I, that only ended up using like half a ball, which was really cool. Um, but then the blue, uh, cause I had to order, I ordered originally two of the blue and one of the cream. And then I had to order one more of the blue to finish it. And so of that last one that I had to order, I used a little more than half of that. And so I don't know what the yardage on that really is but I had less than half of the blue and then about half the cream um and so while I was just kind of in a in a mood um of, of working with that before I got sick of working with it entirely um I ended up casting on something else with the leftover of the blue to gift to my friend along with the top because I had the leftover blue it's really not my color so I don't think I would have used it for anything for myself but since it matched the top I had a feeling that I could like squeeze something out of it and gift it to and so I made a romanticist bandana and this is my fifth finished object for this episode my fifth and final um was this romanticist bandana and I've talked about this pattern before on the podcast it's something that I wanted to make with myself make for myself with um, some of the many, many 50 gram leftovers that I have lying around. Um, and so I figured I could maybe squeeze a bandana out of the leftovers of the blue. And I did, you know. Um, it is short two repeats. Like you're supposed to do, because you start off almost like a shawl, right? <laughs> like you start off at the tip with a very small amount of stitches. 
and then you're just like increasing every other row right to get to this point and so I was supposed to have two more repeats of like this little lace motif um, but I think uh, even though it's a little bit smaller the original bandana is quite large which I think adds to the drama and the romance of it but even missing two repeats and being a little shorter it's still cute like it's still super wearable and I think it'll be a fun little surprise to include I don't think she watches my podcast so hopefully it's still a surprise but if you do watch this podcast um yeah you're getting an extra little thing I am pretty proud of myself because I was like looking at the little cake because I wound the rest of it into a cake just to make it easier for me to like gauge how much I had left. Um, but I was looking at the little cake as I was like doing these repeats and I got to he I got to pass this last motif. I was like, I think I can squeeze out like two more rows <laughs> before I stop and do the I-chord. And so I did two more rows and then I stopped and did the I-chord. And around like here doing the I-chord bind off, I started sweating a little bit. But I got to the end of it and I had, I don't have the tail anymore, I wove in the tail. But I kid you not, I had this much yarn left at the very end of the I-chord. So I talk constantly about how my spatial awareness is not great and that is why I end up in the yarn chicken situation so often but I'm really really proud of myself with that one <laughs> so romanticist bandana and it's super cute here I'll just kind of like a romantic little bandana like that isn't it so cute and I have a I have a little clip in so it's a little bumpy back here but it's so cute it's really really cute and the thing is if I could squeeze out a mostly full bandana with this and I have more than what I had with the blue left in the cream and I think I can definitely make one for myself with the cream that's like a full size and I oh, it's so cute I'm really obsessed with it and now I really 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 want one for myself or four so that is finally the end of my finished objects um, before we get into my whips I need a water break <sighs> Let's get into my whips. Okay, so the first of my whips is a scarf that is, it is literally called the Lace and Cables Scarf. It's called the Lace and Cables Scarf by, by Christy Hills. And this is a pattern that I found on Ravelry. Um, it's from 2014, it was published in 2014. Um, so it's a pretty old pattern, but I was looking for something to knit for, um, well, actually, let me show you the progress I have so far before I get into the story behind it. So it is cute. It's kind of like a muffler kind of deal. The construction is really fun. And I think after this, I want to make a little muffler type thing for myself now. Because um, you start off um, doing like a Judy's Magic Cast On type thing. And that's how you make this little... This little... Um, what's it called? Tube section, I guess. What would you call this? Like a, a sleeve? I don't know. But the, the, the idea is that you knit, so now that I'm done with this, you knit the scarf all the way to end, and right before the tail of the scarf, there's a little rib section that like cinches in a bit, so that when you wear it, you wear it kind of like this, like a muffler ascot kind of thing. And the tail will come around and kind of slot like boop, into here so I'm excited to see where that goes but uh, yeah so I I'm knitting this because my boyfriend's grandma um, recently relocated here to the Bay Area where we are and she's so cold all the time and if you are a knitter then you know that the we can't, we can't hear that someone in our life is cold without doing something about it. Um, and so I am excited because this means that it'll be a really good opportunity for me to make a lot of 
accessories and things because I'm not a huge accessories person to wear but I love making them and so I'm really excited for an opportunity to make more scarves and mitts and warm weather things like that um, and then be able to have someone to gift them to so I'm working on this scarf and yeah so that's pretty much it aside from the yarn so the yarn that I'm using is Rowan Tapestry and this is a vintage yarn that I got from the yarn swap um, that I went through a couple episodes ago. Um, so if you haven't watched that episode, go watch that episode. Um, there's a lot more yarn haul goodness in that episode. Um, but this was one of the goodies that I came out with uh, was this ball of Rowan Tapestry, which is, a, mm, according to Ravelry, it says it's a DK weight, but I would argue that it acts a little more like a worsted weight. Um, it's super thick and thin. Like, there are a lot of slubs in here that are, like, really thick that are, like, I'd say close to, like, a super bulky weight even. And there are some spots where it gets pretty thin, probably closer to, like, a DK weight. But I'd say overall the majority of the yarn is feels like a worsted, and I am getting... Because this pattern calls for a worsted, and I am getting gauge with this yarn for the pattern. So I would call it more like a worsted, but it is a 50 gram ball, and so I was looking for something to use this on, and that's kind of how I came across this scarf in particular. Because, um, you know, a lot of 50 gram stuff is hats, and I don't see her wearing a lot of hats. I don't wear a lot of hats either, and so I was looking for more of like a scarf kind of deal. And then this one kind of came up. So as for the yarn, it is interesting. Um, it is discontinued as of now. And I mean, I can kind of see why. It's not a bad yarn. <laughs> Before I say that, it's not a bad yarn at all. Um, I believe the makeup is 70% wool, 30% soybean fiber, which really intrigued me when I first picked it up. And I wasn't sure at all how it was going to act. Um, and so now I can kind of give a little bit of a review on, a review on it. Um, it is kind of sheddy, like especially when I had it in a project bag earlier, like there were like little fibers like all on the inside of the project bag. And then when I work with it, um, when I'm kind of done working, like there are a little bit of like shed pieces like on the surface that I'm working on. So it is kind of sheddy, um, but I'm hoping that because, like, mm, it's kind of shiny, but it's not as bad as some other things that I've worked with. Like, I would say the Willet yarn is more shiny than this is. Like, that left a lot more fibers everywhere than this does. Um, so, I mean, like, it's okay. But the, the fabric it makes is really soft, and it has a really nice streak to it. Like, you can just see... there and it is self-striping which also surprised me I didn't expect it to be self-striping but it's it's a pretty stripe you know um and as you can probably you can see in the camera too like the yarn has a really beautiful sheen to it so it is it is just kind of very interesting to work with um and then this portion here that I'm holding up this has been steam blocked I took a break and I steam blocked it just to kind of check my gauge again and see where I am and make sure that everything looks nice when it's blocked. So this has been steam blocked. When I'm knitting it up, it's a lot more frumply. <laughs> um, just like with the cables and the lace and everything, it, it's it's quite a lot more frumply when I'm working it. But this has been steam blocked for for checking it. Um, so once it once it's blocked, it turns out really really pretty. Um, and I don't mind the thick and thinness. Uh, I was worried when I discovered kind of like those qualities of the yarn I was worried that it wouldn't be so good anymore for what I wanted to do with it like these lace patterns but um it's working out pretty well so yeah so here's my first new whip Ta-da! okay so on to my second whip um I feel like there's not a whole lot to say story-wise about these probably tired of hearing me tell stories anyway but this is my podcast and I can do what I want <laughs> so um once again in my little cinnamon roll bag I have the daily socks by Summer Lee 
And if you've ever knit socks or looked for sock patterns, you probably have heard of Summer Lee. A lot of people call her like the queen of socks. But these are the daily socks. And so they're very fun. This is a really, really fun knit. I'm having a lot of fun. So it's a all over textured kind of thing. And the texture is made with slip stitches. And so um, the yarn that I'm using is also from the yarn swap. But it was the Pearl Up and Dye yarn. It was a sock yarn. It was a pearlescence yarns sock yarn. Pearl Up and Dye. Um, and it's just kind of like this variegated blue. And admittedly for hand dyed yarns, this is one of my least favorite uh, dye patterns that there are out there. I just don't really like the way that it knits up most of the time. But I think whenever I come into a yarn that is like this, um, like this kind of dye pattern, I think this is going to be my go-to pattern for knitting them up because what, the thing that I don't like about these kinds of yarns is I don't like the way the color pulls. Um, I, like, I just don't like the way it looks when the color pulls. But with these, because you're using slip stitches, it breaks up the color pulls pretty nicely. And even, even the spots where it does pull, like there, you can see that the slip stitch texture does a really good job of breaking that up and not making it so like drastic. And then even here where it's like doing a little stripey number, like it has a variegation in there because of the slip stitches pulling from rows before it. So I'm really liking the way these are um, knitting up. And it's such a fun pattern, like it's super potato chippy. Um, like this, I started this two days ago, two nights ago. Like I started it the night before yesterday and then but when I started it, I pretty much just did the contrast color cuff and that was it. And then yesterday I did like the rest of this basically. Um, super potato chippy. Um, yeah. Oh, and the contrast color cuff. Um, this is the leftovers here. So this is the tiny little ball that I'm using for the contrast color cuff. And if you remember my um, Thula mitts from Christmas for my boyfriend, this was the third color that I was using at the cuff of those. And so kind of matches. Um, so that's kind of fun. What else to say about these? Um, oh, I guess I will say that the sizing was very interesting. So, you know, like their size, like the circumference of the ball, the foot, like that's fine. That's whatever. But, you know, measuring mine, my circumference is like nine inches, but that's a large in the pattern. And the extra large is the largest size there is, which is only 10 inches. And so I was super confused by the sizing. I was like, this seems not correct. Cause like, I don't have large feet. Like I'm like, I don't think I would be considered a large. And so I cast it on the extra large cause he wasn't here for me to like measure or anything. So I cast it on the extra large, but I was a little bit doubtful. So I dove into the project pages um, on this pattern on Ravelry. And there were quite a few people saying that they had to frog and re-knit it in a larger size or with larger needles um, because it ran small because of the slip stitches so it doesn't stretch as much. So that gave me a little bit more confidence, but, but I am still slightly worried that it's gonna be too big. But if that's the case, I mean, like, it's not the end of the world. I'm, <laughs> I'm knitting these with yarn that I got for free. So, you know, it is what it is. They're fun. Yeah. So my last whip before we get into the yarn haul. Um, so my last whip is one that I started last night. Um, and yeah, I've shared the yarn with you before because it was kind of a big acquisition for me when I got it. And I had big plans for it and everything. Um, but I started it last night. Um, let me pull it out. So this is the beginnings. And I've been working on it all day today, pretty much. But like, 
not all day not all day but like I've been working on it today almost exclusively but I started it last night this is the beginnings of a glint vest by Irene Lynn and I'm making this with La Bien Ami DK in the colorway Lannister and Isayer Soft Silk Mohair and like I said I did share come on focus please um I did share both of these yarns in a previous episode. I wanted to focus real bad. There we go. It's making a really, really pretty texture there. So, yeah, sorry. I keep saying this over and over again, but I share both of these yarns <laughs> with a plan to make a vest out of them. And it was kind of a special purchase for me because I've never worked with mohair before. And so I was really excited to try it and try, you know, a nice expensive mohair and see how I feel about it. And I was like, it's low commitment because it's a vest. And so if I don't like the way the mohair feels, then I can just wear it over something and it's not a big deal. I'm loving this like I can't I keep like part of why there's so much like not much progress on this is because I keep like stopping to like feel it <laughs> it's so 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 soft it's really really soft and like I'm scared that this is the beginning that I've gotten like bitten by the mohair bug you know but it's 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 really nice I'm really into it um like I said today's a colder day but I'm seeing the overall trend getting warmer um, but like this weekend's gonna be super cold and then like next weekend I can see that it's gonna cool down again. So I'm kind of like keeping this as like a pocket project and like these are on size eights. Girl, I'm not gonna be using my size eights in the summer. <laughs> like it's just not gonna happen. And so I'm I'm cool with just keeping this as like a little pocket project of like pulling it out in these cooler spring days, you know, just kind of pulling out when it's like dark and gloomy and rainy and something like cozy and fun to work on. So I'm kind of keeping this as that. I'm not rushing to finish it. I don't expect it to wear, I don't expect to wear it this season. Um, and so I'm kind of cool with hanging on to it until the fall and just like slowly working on it. Um, yeah, so long story short, the yarn is a dream. It's so nice. Okay, yeah, so when I first when I first shared this acquisition, I had planned to make the Laura Vest by Irene Lynn, and I don't know what I was thinking. Like, just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking. There is not a world in which I bought nearly enough yarn to make that vest with. So I'm making the Glint Vest instead, which is meant to be worn with a little less positive ease than, than the Laura Vest. But like just looking at the yardage, like what was I thinking? I don't know. I wasn't thinking. And so either way, the glint vest is also pretty. Um, one thing I will say though is I think it is, um, I don't think I've bit off more than I can chew. Like I, I'm definitely going to be okay, but it's going to take me a little bit because um, I wouldn't call it a difficult pattern because I've definitely made, you know, like crazy, ooh, it's really raining out there. Anyway. Um, can you tell that I have ADHD? Anyway, <laughs> um, I've definitely made like more complex cable garments like this sweater, you know, like my botanist cardigan. I've definitely done much more complex cables. I don't think it's a difficult pattern, but I think, I think it's a difficult pattern to have been my first mohair pattern. Because, you know, well, mohair, like, it's not difficult to, to knit, but it is fuzzier. Like, it is harder to pick up, you know, the held together stitches and dealing with the fuzz and all that stuff. So, like, it is a little bit more difficult. I think I could have served myself better by choosing, like, a plain stockinette project as my first mohair project. But, I mean, it is what it is. There's no going back now. And I think in the end, I'll be fine. In the end, I will be fine. Okay, so that is the end of all of my projects. So we get to dive into the real fun stuff, AKA my yarn haul crawl. <laughs> my yarn, my yarn crawl haul. My yarn crawl haul. So if 
you don't know, past couple of episodes I've been talking about the Bay Area Yarn Crawl, which this is the first year that they've put it on, and it's kind of a replacement for stitches, which I never got the chance to go to either. Um, but essentially, it's an, it was an event that took place over 10 days and involved 21 shops um, around the Bay Area. Uh, and it was just kind of like this challenge to go visit as many shops as you can. A lot of shops had like limited edition colorways. They had like trunk shows going on, designers in house, you know, giveaways, like lots of stuff going on. And there was also like a bingo thing. I didn't win bingo, but I got a bingo, but I didn't win the bingo raffle. And I'm not salty about it or anything. I, I have I have enough yarn, okay? Like I came out of this thing with enough yarn. I didn't need more yarn, so it's fine. But I went to, I actually don't even know how many shops I went to. I did, did not go to all 21. There's no way I could have gone to all 21, but I went to a decent amount. I'm gonna calculate them up right now. But I think I went to eight. We'll see, because um, I'm gonna go through my haul. As I'm gonna go through it by shop as best I can. <laughs> um, and I kind of got to hurry a little bit so I don't run out of space on my card. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. I don't have notes for this portion. I'm just kind of going off of memory. So I'll do my best to get everything as clean as possible. But as always, I will definitely have like um, more information available on the screen. So... Okay, so the first shop that I went to was Busy Sticks in Lafayette. Um, Busy Sticks is actually my local yarn store um, and the one that I go to most frequently. Um, Busy Sticks is also where I got the yarn for like this sweater and for my Between Petals pullover previously. Um, so Busy Sticks is my local yarn store and so I started off there on day one of the crawl. Um, just like on my way back from work because I was like, well, it's day one, you know, I'll just see if anything's going on. And so, uh, day one, I also didn't want to like <laughs> blow my money too early and especially on a, on a shop that's very close to home. So I didn't really buy a whole lot, but I did buy these pretty, um, stitch markers by Pearl Smith. And so they're made with freshwater pearls. And they had a bunch of these there, but I picked up this, this color palette was really speaking to me. And after getting home and after adding to my crawl haul over and over again, I kind of realized that this <laughs> set of stitch markers ended up being very predictive of like the color palette that I ended up with like at the end of the crawl. So I thought that was kind of funny, but it's, it's just a sign of, you know, the colors that I like to knit with and that I like to wear. And, um, you're welcome, by the way, because I've been wanting to use these, like, all week. <laughs> and I've been like, no, save them, like, keep them on the card until, until you film. Um, so now I can finally use them. Yay! For my purchase of Busy Sticks, I got a wheel spin. And I, 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 I almost felt bad because I kept, I went back on the last day of the crawl too um and i spun again and i won again but my first wheel spin i won this uh fade kit or fade set um of fingering weight yarn from knitted wit and uh this is what this one is called yellow brick road and it's so cute i love these colors and they're totally my colors too and so um with the kit it does come with a pattern for like a cowl but I don't really want to make the cowl. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I, I've already been like brainstorming of like things that I can do with this. This is enough yarn to do the yoke of a colorwork sweater. Like a fingering weight colorwork sweater, it's enough to do the yoke. So I have been like racking my brain, thinking of color combinations that I could do, you know, as like the main color for a sweater like this. And I think I really want to make um, the Saski uh pull over by the petite knitter and that's the one i'll put a picture but it's the one with like the bunnies and the moons and the clouds and i think it'd be really cute with this fade as like um because it would be the lightest one is like the moons right and then going down to like the darker one is the bunnies um and so i really want to do that one and i'm thinking of pairing it with 
um, like a very, very, very dark purple, like an almost black purple or like tonal or something like that. Um, and I say very, very dark because I don't want it to look like Lakers basketball colors. <laughs> Boo, we hate the Lakers. <laughs> but I, I really want something that is like an almost black, but maybe a little purple toned or blue toned, but I think I would prefer a purple over a blue. So that's my plan with these, but this is super fun to win. I was really excited about this. So I went to Imagine It in San Francisco. And um, this is kind of towards the end of the crawl, and so I was like, <laughs> I was really close to my budget, and <laughs> so I didn't really want to spend a whole lot more on yarn, but I did get these um, sock yarns, this pair of sock yarns. These are 50 each, and so I got two so I could make a pretty long sock with, with you know, the yarn in total. But they're so cute, like, and they had a bunch of, they had a whole, like, section that was just different ones of these and there were a couple colorways that really spoke to me but I really I really like the one that I ended up with and this is Koi Goo out of uh, out of Canada so this is by Koi Goo this is KPPPM I'm not sure what that stands for but some beautiful sock yarn Ta -da. and it's really squishy and also in San Francisco, we went to Firebird Yarns, and Firebird was having a Woolen Works trunk show. And um, my boyfriend picked out this colorway for a potential pair of socks for him later. And this is their fingering sock base, which is 80% um, extra fine Australian superwash merino. Will it focus, please? Focus. Okay, there we go. And then 20% nylon. There we go. There we go. Um, so it's a really, really pretty colorway. And this is Me as a Bird. The colorway is called Me as a Bird. Um, I've been following Woolen Works um, on Instagram for a while, but it's really hard to get their yarn because they're based in Australia. So I was really happy to see that they had a trunk show going on. This yarn is so soft. I'm really excited to work with it for whatever it ends up being. Um, yeah, it's really, really soft. And I love the colors. It's so pastel -y. It's like, it reminds me of like a rainbow sherbet. <laughs> from myself, or uh, for myself, from Firebird, um, I got my own skein of sock yarn. This is from Seismic Yarns in Daily City. And this colorway is called Sugar Daddy. And it's a Firebird exclusive <laughs> to the shop. I'm gonna have a real hard time getting these all to focus. Um, but this is their Seismic Butter Sock Base. It's so soft. Um, but this is extra fine merino. So that means that it has like a lower micron count than most other merinos that you'll find. And it's an 8515 merino and nylon. Will it focus, please? Okay, there we go. So yeah, this colorway is called Sugar Daddy. I was so close to buying a sweater quantity of um, one of their Erin bases. Um, I, was, I was this close. I was ready to pull the trigger. But they only, they only stocked stores in batches of four. And so I could not get enough for a sweater quantity. But I think definitely once I chew through all the yarn that I did buy... Um, I am going to return and or to the to the dyer, not order sweater quantity online, and I'm really excited about that too. I also got these point protectors from Imagine It. They're strawberries, and this is from Comma Craft Co. I think we're mutuals on Instagram, actually, but um, I saw a lot of Comma Craft Co. Um, point protectors at a couple stores that we went to, but the strawberries spoke to me. Um, I also got, you know, I'll just share them now. This is from Black Squirrel in Berkeley, but I also got um, pumpkin pies earlier in the crawl. And I've been, I've been using these pumpkin pies already. I couldn't help myself. I've been needing point protectors for a while. Um, so I got point protectors. They're so cute. Let's talk about Black Squirrel too, because also at Black Squirrel, I'm trying to keep all this yarn in my lap. 
<laughs> also black squirrel i this is like pretty much my first big yarn purchase of the crawl but i got these three skeins of surrey alpaca hand dyed surrey alpaca this is from anzula anzula luxury fibers um which is based out of fresno and so it's just so pretty and so this is their hazy base which is 75 percent surrey alpaca 25 percent silk the colorway is called olivia and so I guess it's supposed to be olive, but to me this just kind of like screams pistachio. And you know me, I'm a green girly. And I just, I'm really loving these colors. They're so pretty. Um, and so pretty much all crawl along, I was looking for, um, I was looking for a yarn to pair with this, like a fingering weight to pair with this for a sweater quantity. And I ended up with, um, these this is earth yarns in the color grape leaf what's the base open up so this is their harvest base which is 100 percent superwash merino um and then the the color is called grape leaf so this is from fillery yarn in san jose and so i picked these up i didn't have them side by side but i thought you know i thought they would work well together and so very plain um, fingering base, and then this hand dyed Zuri alpaca. So this for me is a sweater quantity. I, ha I already have a couple of ideas. Like I have so many patterns um, in my Ravelry favorites that are like that are like a fingering weight and like a lace weight mohair. Um, so I'm sure I'll find something to do with it. Like I have, I have options. Boop, boop. Also at Fillery Yarn, um, I got a Zauber Ball. This is Zauber Ball crazy. And so my boyfriend and I were there and he was like, those are cool. And I'm like, oh, there's Zauber Balls. So he convinced me to get a Zauber Ball for myself. <laughs> So this will be some kind of either vanilla or just like a plain rib kind of sock, but it is fun. I'm excited. To, I'm excited to try it. Um, it does. It does feel nice. Like I think these will be. I really like the way that it's put up. It's like a ball, but it's it's a really fun squishy ball. So, so I got myself a Zauber ball at Fillery. He was really drawn to. There's a dog hair in this. So he was really drawn to this color. They had a bunch of these um, Lang yarns, these Lang Superwash um, yarns. So this is 75% wool, 25% nylon. Um, so just a uh, 50 gram skein of sock yarn. So this will just be some shorties in the future. But he's really drawn to this color, um, as you can see. There's kind of a theme going on here, so I will have to keep this in mind. <laughs> um, so these will just be some shorties at some point in the future. And I do have... So I do have this little um, 7 gram cake from that didn't get used in his mitts because the other one ended up being enough just by itself. So I think these would be a good pair to do like a contrast heel or toe or something like that so i think these will make a good pair in the future for some shorties yeah okay so that, that wasn't as bad as i thought we're, we're we're getting there we're getting to the end yeah so uncommon threads in los altos is another yarn store that i usually frequent already and so we paid a visit during the yarn crawl um, and they had a trunk show um from playful day yarns and so I told my boyfriend at the start of the crawl, I said, if you see anything that speaks to you, like, if, if you see anything that you want something in, I will knit for you. And so these really spoke to him. And this is their yak fingering base, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon and fingering weight. Um, and this is in the colorway Moon Rock. And so we picked up a sweater quantity of these. They are really soft. They were out on the table and he was kind of like doing the old touchy feely and he said, ooh, 
I would and could wear a sweater of this. And so, and so we picked up a sweater quantity and yeah. So, um, after picking this up, I was just kind of like on Ravelry and Instagram and I showed him the petite knitters, um, seek seek pattern, which is the one with the squirrels on it. Um, and he fell in love. He said, I want that sweater. And so it is, it is a fingering weight color brick sweater. And so I told him, I said, okay, I bought all these yarns for your sweater. Um, I'll make you a deal. Go to Uncommon Threads and buy me a contrast color in a sock weight, in a fingering weight, and I'll make the sweater for you. <laughs> and so he went there and all of the employees and everyone in the store got into a whole he, he sparked a whole debate about sock yarns and, oh, was this one super washed? Oh, is this one fingering stuff? But he ended up with um, a white Malabrigo sock skein. And I think, I haven't seen it in person yet, but I think it's just their undyed base. And so that'll be the white contrast to these yarns for a Seek Seek jumper um, sometime soon. I, I think I'm going to knit it sometime soon, even though it is going to get warmer. Um, I'm just so excited about the pattern that I think I will just cast it on whenever I get my hands on the yarn, so, yep. And then, also from Uncommon Threads, I've been wanting to make the Oolong Tank by Amy Sher for a bit now, and so I've been, I was on the lookout pretty much like all crawl along for some yarn that would fit the bill. Um, and so I ended up with, uh, and once again this is also from Uncommon Threads, but I ended up with Mary Lynn. Uh, Isayer Marilyn, which is 80% merino, 20% linen or flax, and just this kind of like neutral, neutral beige, not even beige, it's like a neutral cream color, and I, I think this will just be a very nice basic color for like an anything, so picked up some Marilyn for that because the original is knit in an alpaca and linen is either linen or cotton but i think it's linen like an alpaca linen blend and so that has like beautiful drape but unfortunately without getting that exact yarn it's kind of really hard to find like an, an alpaca cotton or linen blend oh you know what i could have used ilamani Maybe I'll make a second one. <laughs> I c I'm realizing right now that Dizzy Sticks always stocks Illimani and they have like an alpaca cotton base. And I could have used that, but I didn't. Well, I'll make one with this Mary Lynn and then if I like it enough to make another one, then maybe I'll make another one. But yeah, so I got these. Hey, we're, all we're almost done. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. We're almost done. I have like one left, so. On the last day of the crawl, on our way back from San Francisco, where we were visit visiting like Imagine It and Firebird and stuff, um, we ended up going back to Busy Sticks because it was on our way back. Um, and when we were there, they were actually having a trunk show on that day. That wasn't happening on the day that I had gone, so it was exciting. It was fun. Um, and they had a designer there. Um, what's her name? I think it's This Cozy Life. I'll put her information and links and stuff right here and in the description. Um, but they had this cozy life there and she was showing off her, her patterns and stuff. She's a pattern designer. And then they also had a trunk show of Sincere Sheep, which is out of Napa. And um, while I was there, you know, the employees were telling me that you can make this particular design of hers in one skein of this sport weight from Sincere Sheep. And so I got influenced and I bought it. Um, but I am excited to knit it up. It's a cute, it is a cute top. Um, and so she was also having a, a coupon code that you could use during the crawl. So I was able to get that pattern on discount. So I already own the pattern and I already own the yarn. So this will probably be, um, this will probably be a cast on fairly soon, I'm imagining. Because like I already own the pattern, so why not? Um, yeah, so this is, I haven't even read the label of this too, too, too well. So this is Sincere Sheep, uh, handmade in the Napa Valley. I'm pretty sure their whole thing is like similar to Verb for Keeping Warm, which, oh, I did visit Verb for Keeping Warm, but the line was so crazy that, um, we were literally like, you know what, let's just like, it's close by, we'll just like come back some other time. 
<laughs> so, um, oh my gosh, I'm almost out of battery, so I gotta hurry it up. Um, uh, but I believe their thing is that they also use natural dyes. So this is the Coastal Colorway, and this is a sport base, and the base is 50% Shiny Co. Wool, 25% Mulberry Silk, and 25% Belgian Linen. And it's this really pretty lilac color. I know I've knit a lot of purple. I know I already made lilac a lot, but it was pretty, okay? So, and this will fill a different niche because it'll be like a tank top kind of situation, like tank top camisole kind of situation. So it'll fill a different niche. Although as I'm saying that, I realize now that I have a Madewell tank top that is that color, but that's okay. And then for my purchase there, I got another wheel spin at Busy Sticks and I won this pattern book. So this is Wool Studio, Knitwear Wool Studio, the Nora Gauhan, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but it's a collection of patterns. Um, this, and it's really funny. When I got the book, I was like, I recognize this girl. She's like the model in so many interweave patterns. And then I looked on the back and it's published by interweave. So that, that explains a lot. <laughs> um, and it's kind of really sad that I'm at the point now where I like recognize knitwear models, but you know, whatever so this is a nice pattern book um yeah thank you so much for watching to the end of this video if you're still here i know this was like a doozy of an episode but i had so much that i wanted to share with you and i was super excited to sit down and get this filmed and share everything that's going on in my knitting life with you um yeah, so if you like what I'm doing here, please take a moment to give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Your support means so much more than you know. And you can always follow me on Instagram at YarnyHeart for more updates in between. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!